this bitch! Growing up in a coastal community in New England, I felt a very strong connection with the water my whole life. Now that I live in Oregon, I have the opportunity to experience a whole new watery ecosystem from the rivers to the waterfalls and the coast. I want to meet the people that harvest from and live in harmony with all the waters that Oregon has to offer. I made it to the Oregon coast. Vast, beautiful views, huge swells, and a dangerous, rocky intertidal zone. We're about to meet up with James Youngworth, who makes a living foraging from this coastal area. My wife and I moved out here to Oregon in 1989, and I was already an avid seaweed eater. Of course, when we moved out here, I wanted to get to know all the seaweeds, and so I started harvesting and drying and feeding my family with them. We started selling uh, seaweed to our friends, and at the local barter fair. We were looking for a niche, a way to support ourselves coming out here, and we found it. Are there any seaweeds that you can't eat, or are they all edible? There's not really any toxic seaweeds. If they taste good, they're okay. The thing to remember is that the seaweeds grow on rocks. If you find them washed up on a beach, that's like the compost pile. The garden is rocky areas that are exposed at low tide. Eating seaweed is like one of the best things you can do for cardiovascular health, for cancer prevention. I mean, I could just go on and on. Wow, this is beautiful. This is one of the most complex ecosystems anywhere. That's why we harvest each plant in a way that allows each plant to continue to grow and reproduce so that it maintains the integrity of the ecosystem for all the other things that live there. Well, we got a heron out there looking for something to eat. He's like us. <laughs> yep. So if you see over here, this is nori. It's fairly tender just to eat right off the rocks. Oh yeah. It tastes like this whole place, if you could imagine that. So I see a nice patch of bladderwrack over here. When you harvest this one, you just harvest the tips because the rest of it is a little bit tough. I could eat this all day. It's much better cooked. How could it get better than this? Oh. So let's see what we can find out in the water here. <gasps> it's gold! Oh, it's so cold! Mm. I thought it was going to be like tropical from the way you were talking about it. This is Oregon. Does that look fresh? Yeah, so this is a bull kelp. We're lucky to be able to find a nice one washed up like this. It's actually like probably the richest source of potassium of any natural food in the whole world. Well, do you want to get some mussels? Yeah, we might as well. Sometimes they can be poisonous because there's different kind of bacterial blooms in the ocean. The Oregon Department of Agriculture has got a hotline and a website you can check with them. They're safe now. They're safe. I checked. All right, perfect. I saw some really nice goose barnacles over here. They're actually in the crab family, right? They're a crustacean, correct. Yeah, Whoa. check these out. They're big ones, huh? Holy sh So the trick with these is you want to cut them really close to the base because you want to get as much of the neck as possible. Now that's the part that you eat. Wow, that's a big one. What are these supposed to taste like? They taste like like lobster or crab only wish they could taste like. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> I didn't think it could get any bigger, but <laughs> we weren't trying hard enough. This is great. Got some protein, some vegetables. We'll have a feast. All from right here. Just in a little walk on the ocean. Yeah, it's a lot better than going to the grocery store. You're just gonna cook them whole like that? Right, I'll just put a little bit of water on the bottom. That way they just steam and it doesn't take very long. And it smells like the ocean. Is it almost done? The shellfish are pretty much done. You can see how they, their shells are opened up on the mussels. The bladder rack's still a little bit chewy, but it's okay. Everything else is tender. Should we put some like specimens out on our block that we found? Sure. Is it clean enough? Looks clean to me. <laughs> good man. Oh, these look so good. Pacific blue mussels, right? That's right. Mmm. Oh man, that's a good mussel. Fresh. Doesn't get any fresher than this. Cheers. 
Could be nice in a stir fry, huh? It really would, chopped up. Oh, you could use these like noodles, right? They're al dente. Bladder rack. Mmm. I think this is, might be my favorite of the three. It's like, I love the texture and it's super mild. And then we have the nori. Now the nori's got a meaty taste because you can taste all the protein in there. I agree, it really does. How do you do this? So, okay, you got to open it up. Oh, you see that? <laughs> the skin isn't any good, it's too tough. So you just peel that down and pull that neck out of there. rich, huh? Wow. Yeah, it's definitely a crustacean. No doubt about it. This is in the crab family. Like, it tastes like a crab, but like more intense. And very sweet. Very sweet. So why don't more people get down with these? They look kind of strange. You know, most people think, oh, that can't be food, you know. They taste like the ocean. Delicious. Today we're going crabbing in Neatards Bay. This morning when I woke up, I had no idea we were gonna be like right on the bay and it was absolutely beautiful. The boat I'm going on like doesn't have a captain, doesn't have any experienced crabbers on it, so I'm basically in charge of my own destiny here. I thought we were going on a real boat. Fisherman. Good morning. I'm Zach. I'm Gabby. Gabby. Nice right. to meet you. Got the boat all ready for you. You've been crabbing before? Um, no. All right, so this is the crab measure. Males only, five and three quarters or larger. As you see right there, it's just a little bit shy. Okay. So it's not gonna be a keeper. I got you set up with a couple rings, put it in the water, it'll lay flat on the bay floor, and then when we check it, it kind of traps them all up and collects them in the basket. I got the boat all set up and ready for you. All right. So we can go ahead and meet on down at the boat launch. I'm gonna back the boat down in, pull it to the end of the dock, and I'll be right back down to fire it up and get you going. Okay, awesome. All right, this is some yellow trout. Oh, yellow trout, delicacy for crabs. Sure enough. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set these and you're gonna wait about 10, 20 minutes max, and then you're just gonna pull them. The trap right here, you're gonna wanna let it soak for about 45 minutes. You got these little trap doors on it, every side that kind of lets them in. I don't think I'm glad I saw this trap. Get any crab. There ain't any nut out there. What's like the best place around here to find crabs? South along the road, about 20 to 40 yards off the rocks. It's the deepest spot in the bay. Forty-five minutes, let it simmer. All right, over near this jetty is where the elusive red crab lurks. The seal was over here, that's always a good sign because those fat bastards love to eat crabs. Ah! I grew up on boats. At one point, I did take a boat safety course. I don't remember a damn thing from that. Oh good, this one has got chicken on it. Crab's favorite. I love boating. You can leave your cell phone on shore, and you just go, just get the fuck out. It's perfect. This is where I feel at peace, for sure. Please, please, please be crabs. Oh, no, shit, we didn't get anything. <sighs> Boring. Maybe I should drop my crab pots where other people have dropped their crab pots. That's a real fisherman's mindset. <laughs> Come on, crabbies. All we need is one crab. But I'd like to get 10 or 15. That'd be better. Oh, little crabbers. Come to mama. What the hell? We just got some babies. Not legal size. Hey, it's a seal. Don't eat my crabs, bitch! They ate all my bait and they're all gone. What happened there? I really hope this one has some crabs in it. It feels heavy! Oh my god! Ah! Ah, I got me the crabs! Woo! Oh my gosh, you got me the crabbies! Alright, let's get rid of the little ones. Wow. We have a couple of keepers here. Look at that, it doesn't even fit in the measuring. 
I will name you Bob. <gasps> this is Johnny. He's a rock crab. He's super feisty. Poor guy. I'm gonna eat you. Wow, this place is rad. Throw those suckers in. Oh, okay, you want to tandem it? And watch Splash. So how long has this shack been around? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, the current owner's owned about 20 years. Our summertime activities include like a full RV park. Everybody brings their own boats. It's like Margaritaville. Are crab people crazy? Uh, they can be. What you find is uh, a thousand different philosophies with crabbing. One year, if we don't do too hot, everybody comes out of the woodwork with you know, scientific facts of why we're not getting crab, you know. What makes Neatard's Bay so special? Well, we don't have a lot of rivers feeding in, so it keeps the salt content high, and we're a smaller bay. You guys have it good here. Yeah, nestled off, you know, in our own little pocket of the coast. All right, what's going on in here? They're getting red, is that a good sign? Absolutely. Ooh, they look so good. I love me some crab. We're gonna get them cooling off. Water. They're boiling on the inside. You ever had crab butter before? No? The insides. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. All right. Just take your fingernail and tuck up the side of it. Yep. Pull it down. Now we're going to take the shell and just pry it. Absolutely. Mm. You just set the crab over to the side. And this right here is the crab butter. Cheers. Absolutely. Oh man, that's good. Crab delicious. All the guts down the center right here, just wash it right out. And I got something special right here. I got you a crab heart. There it is right there. Mm, crab heart. Right of passage. I feel at one with the crab now. <sighs> All right, grab a claw. That's definitely the most prime meat. Can I just eat this? Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. Mm. It's delicate but rich at the same time. Yeah, it's hard to explain, but uh, it absolutely. Is. It, wanna try some Red Rock? Yeah, the Red Rocks are a lot harder. You definitely need crackers with them. Yeah, don't even try to get these going without. <gasps> Ooh, I just did Empress Cut. Yeah, perfect. Mm. It's really good. I have to mm. say, I like Dungeness a lot better, but that actually uh, lived up to people saying it's sweeter. The texture? A little it's bit different. It's not as delicate. Not as delicate. No, but the taste is better. Absolutely. In a way. I mean, it's hard to say better or worse. Like, it's just different. Okay, now that I eat the Dungeness, I like the Dungeness better. And then I eat the other one, I like that one better. I like it all. So good. Oh, man. High five. Good job. Good job to you. dawn in the Oregon winter and I'm headed into the mountains to learn the art of fly fishing in the freezing cold waters of the Deschutes River. It's really interesting terrain out here. It's like being on the moon. I've heard fly fishing is like the most difficult form of angling out there, especially when it comes to steelhead trout. Luckily, I have some expert anglers with me. Two local chefs who call even a bad day on the river way better than a good day at work. These fish face a lot of challenges, so every one is special and they're all basically unicorns. You know, it's not like you're fishing with a piece of bait. This is almost like a cat toy. Let's do this one. All right. I hope I don't have to pee. It's part of the adventure. It's cool to pee in the waders? Peeing in your waders is cool. Call me Miles Davis. <laughs> Casting a two-handed rod for steelhead is the pinnacle of the sport. Oh, it's chilly. The principle of spay casting is you're using a long line. So you'll see how thick it is. And I'm gonna place the line right on the water and we're gonna use that water tension. You're gonna rip the line off the water and you make a forward cast. All right, so we flop it down. Yep, the flop. Now tear. Very close. It's gonna take you time. It took me a year to learn how to do this. Okay. If you're out, you know, doing all that, it opens up the cast. Whereas if you're keeping it really tight, you're gonna keep a much tighter cast. Tear, yep. And the thing with fishing like this is you can fish all day and not catch a fish. So if you're gonna spend all that time out here, you might as well have fun learning something like this. It's super technical. Holy moly, you just made a cast. Is that good? That just happened, yeah. Really? 
What exactly are we making today? I went hunting and uh, shot a deer. So we've got classic German style venison stew. You know, we went to the farmer's market, got some beautiful red cabbage, braised that up with mountain huckleberries. We've got hedgehog mushrooms, buckwheat spetzel. Buckwheat's a huge crop out here. Mm. So it's not unreasonable to say that all these products are from within 100 or so miles. The majority of the prep we do ahead of time, we just bring food out in bags. And that way anything like a stew heats up really quickly and easily. So we can eat a meal like you get in a restaurant out here on the river in no time. Cheers. 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 Mmm, that's the bomb. I'm standing next to the man who not only hunted this deer, but cooked it for me. It's really a good feeling. Check it out, bighorn sheep. Oh my God, those are so cool. Huge horns, like the horn to body ratio is like intense. I never get sick of these things. Here we go, picking up speed. I fucking love rowing rivers, man. I grew up in New Jersey, and you grow up reading Fly Fishing Magazine and all these fancy publications, and you see these gorgeous pictures of places like this, people fishing, and it was always so far out of reach for me. And I said, shit, well someday if I ever make it out west, I'm gonna buy a drift boat and I'm gonna fish the way I've always dreamed of fish. That's sort of how we ended up here. It's one of my favorite places on earth. Heron. Oh, wow. Big Heron. Wow. Every single cast, you have to believe, and you have to hope, and you have to pray that you're gonna see a fish. And those who stick with it are rewarded, but they call a steelhead a fish of a thousand casts. You cast a thousand times, you don't see a fish. We fished 40 hours in five days, and then on our last days each, we both caught a fish, yeah. and it was worth it. This really is the youngest part of America. We still have a lot to lose out here, which is why the management's really important. Back in the day, it was basically like, wow, this river's full of fish, let's take them all. You know, if we do hook a wild fish, we want to bring it in as quickly as possible and keep it under the water the whole time. These guys, you know, hoisting these fish up and like, look what I got. You know, that's great for Facebook, but it's terrible for the fish. You feel pretty confident? As confident as I can. Oh, you're getting a little loosey-goosey. Yep. Oh. Follow the road. Bend the elbow? Almost. I'm casting like a 10 year old or worse. Oh God, I hate to say it, but I don't think I'm gonna catch a fish today. Partially because I don't think I deserve to catch a fish. I respect people that do this because it takes a lot of patience. Whoa, that looked good. That feel right? Yeah. All right? You crushed it today with the casting. Really? Yeah. You really actually did pick it up pretty quick. I was impressed. I never felt like I did it right, though. Neither did I. Neither did you? No. <laughs> and that's okay, too. I would have never come to do this on my own, so thank you so much for taking me. This is, like, really special. I'll never forget it. There are pheromone-like compounds in some truffles. It just makes you honey. Oh, what? Oh my God, it's so good. Waffles are all about making your dreams come true right in front of your eyes. That's perfect, and you're perfect just the way you are. <laughs> We're really wrapping this up yeah. in style. I put hallucinogenic mushrooms in the risotto. <laughs> <laughs>